Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Good morning. You guys are looking fantastic. Love you guys. Want to welcome all those who are online. Robin, appreciate you guys doing that. Real quick on announcement, really encourage you guys to come on Wednesday nights. Uh, we have this new thing called Recharge, and it's just really just diving in, getting refreshed, getting recharged for the middle of the week. It's a middle of the week fix. Anybody ever needed a fix in the middle of the week? Like your old druggies? I know y'all, but we just need to get a, a spiritual nourishment and encouragement and built up and strengthened. Uh, you're not put on the spot. I really, really encourage you guys to do that and continue to pray for the admin. Uh, all that's being, all the, there's just a lot of stuff going on. All the paperwork, Natalie's doing a bunch of that. So that's in the process and we will get there. We're, we're closer than we were yesterday. That's all I can say. Amen. Amen. We are in a series. This is our last talk on the series, Name Dropper. Name Dropper, we've just been dropping different names of God um, these last eight weeks or so. And I think this is the eighth talk on that. And so today we've got a very, very special one that we're going to be uh, taking a look at, but names are very important. So every single name that we've been uh, talking about reveals the character and nature of our Heavenly Father. When you understand God's character and nature, when you're you know, reflecting through his name, you, you're in a position to receive the benefits and the provision that he's made available to us when that name is exposed. And so it's really, really awesome to do a study like this and just to hold fast to those things because the more you know him, your faith increases. Names are important. I heard about a teacher who was asking their class, uh, how many guys know the name of God? And little Johnny was in there. He goes, I know it. He goes, what's his name, little Johnny? He goes, the name is Howard. He goes, what do you mean, Howard? He goes, yeah, I just read, our Father who art in heaven, Howard be thy name. <laughs> and I thought that was cute. I thought I'd share that with you. But it's not Howard. It's a name that we're going to be looking at today. You know, we, I was at a banquet yesterday, um, a fundraiser for one of the brothers who used to be on staff here, uh, little Jacob Senecetos, who uh, went home to be with the Lord a few years ago because of leukemia, and his sister was pregnant. And I was like, hey, you're pregnant. He goes, yeah, I'm pregnant. It's like, what's the baby's name? He goes, I don't know yet. He goes, well, what is it, a boy or girl? He goes, I don't know yet. He goes, what do you mean? He goes, it's, we're having a reveal today. You know how people go all out? Amber alert. Natalie's missing. Nat, there you are. And so you go all out and do that, and, um, uh, you know, later on that day, they're going to be revealing it. Well, you know, some people, some people choose the name of their child, and a lot of times they're correct. It, it, the, the characteristics of the qualities of that child represents their name. Anybody ever experienced that? Like some of us, we must have been smoking pot or someone we named our kids because it just, like, doesn't match at all. Like Fatima or whatever. It's like there's some weird name. So I had to look up my name. And uh, my name, uh, I was like, man, I wonder what part of my name reflects really who I am. And so the first one, Marcus, just means warlike or hammer. It's like, hmm. And maybe Natalie might think that, yeah, I might be a stubborn headed or a hammerhead or whatever. I I'm not sure. I, I used to like to get hammered in old, old, old school. But I don't know if that's, that's necessarily the right quality, although there's an inner fight inside me. Because I'm not a fighter, but on the inside, man, I got a major fight. But I think the second one, my middle name, is really reflects who I am. Anthony, which means a priceless one. That's who I am, a precious one, worthy of praise, worthy of flourishing. And I love that name, and I'm going to stick with that, right? Today, we're looking at the most important name in all of this particular series. Pastor Joel asked me, he goes, hey, you're going to be doing the, the Sunday's message. It's like, yeah, what name are you going to talk about? It's like, man, we're going to talk about the name we haven't even looked at yet. He goes, it's Jesus, He's the one that we're going to be taking a look at uh, this morning. So Jesus is just a beautiful, beautiful name. So let's take a look at that real quick. I'm going to try to share some things out of my heart. Jesus, Yasus, is where we get this name. It corresponds to the name Jesus in English. Comes from the Hebrew name, Yeshua, which means our salvation. So that's why that particular name means God has become my salvation. Isaiah the 12th chapter says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yahweh, Yeshua, the Lord, is my strength. He is my song. He has also become my salvation. So now here, here's the beautiful thing. That word Yeshua, where we get it, there has a root word in there. It's called Yasha. And Yasha is just blew me away. I was like, oh my gosh, you can look it up. And from that word, are different qualities and characteristics that are just so beautiful about the person of Jesus. What does it mean? 
Yasha means to help. When you take a look at all these, you can look at the Gospels, you can see every single one of these qualities and more. He comes to help, to preserve, to avenge, to defend, to deliver, to rescue, to make free, to bring to safety, to get the victory. That's why he says, I am. I am who? I am whatever you need. I love that. Don't you love these qualities? I'm like, isn't the very, that's the very thing we're constantly asking for every single week. Some kind of trouble. Lord, I need your help. God, I need to prevent. You help me to rescue me from this stuff. Avenge me from this situation. Defend me in this situation. It's all, that's why we say Jesus is the answer. So what do we do that when we understand if all this is wrapped up in his name, how do we respond to that? Well, Proverbs, the 18th chapter says that the, the, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to it and are not afraid. Question, who are you running to when heartaches come? Who do you run into when the, the, the things just falling out from underneath you? Where do we run to in times of trouble? How do we respond to those things? Where do we run to when we face the common struggles, when you feel rejected? The Lord so, spoke to me this last week. And he said, Marcus, whenever you feel rejection, because that's my button, connection, when you get rejection, pay attention to what takes place right there because that's your crossroads and that's your crossroads too. When people are, you know, whenever, whenever you're being pushed, whenever you're being challenged, whenever you're, you're, you're in that place, that's a cro- so, so if you're not careful, you'll start acting out in those moments. Rejection always leads to addiction. And so if I'm not careful, I'll, I'll go down a path that I used to go to. It's like, where'd that come from? Well, he says, pay attention to that. Where do you run to when you face rejection? Where do you run to when you face stress financially, when you lack purpose, when you feel depressed, when you feel like there's no vision, when you feel like your marriage is on the rocks and you don't know what to do anymore? Where do you run to? Let's run to Jesus because he is the defender. He is the one that rescues us. He is the one that helps us in every single situation. He has become my salvation. Jesus didn't come on this earth to bring you religion. He came on this earth to bring us redemption. He needed to redeem us. A few weeks ago, I was at a, at a banquet, at a fundraising banquet, and I met, I met this gentleman that I met that he, I was his youth pastor 30 something years ago. And um, I said, Michael, I said, man, it's so good to see you. He was out in California and he came uh, over here to move back. I said, what do you do? He goes, man, I'm the main marketing guy for different businesses up in the California area. He goes, one of them is tailor-made products. I'm like, tailor-made like the golf club's tailor-made? He goes, yes, because I'm the main marketing guy. I was like, dude, hook me up. I need some golf clubs. And he goes, actually, Marcus, he goes, yeah. He goes, man, I I get a $2,000 voucher every single year. I've got a $2,000 voucher. You can have it. It's like, what? Are you serious? He goes, yes. It's like, okay. So he sends, he goes, I'm going to send you, give you access to my account. I'm going to give you the code. You, you access it, you put it in there, and then you can buy whatever club that you want. You could redeem that by putting that code. And I was like, oh, that's so beautiful. But isn't that what Jesus did in our lives, right? He gives us a code because of what Jesus did on that cross. He gave us the code. When we understand the sacrifice of his son and how he redeemed our life from destruction on that cross, that's the secret code. That's the thing that we need to access the Father's forgiveness, to access the Father's love, to access all the resources of heaven. It's all wrapped up in that name. He has redeemed our life from destruction. Matthew, the first chapter, it says, and she will bring forth the son and you will call his name Jesus because he will save his people from our sins. He's redeemed our life from destruction. The apostle Paul said it this way in the Philippians chapter. Philippians, it says this, that God highly exalted him. Put that in there, the next one. And he gave him a name which is above every name and that at that name, every knee would bow. At the name of Jesus, every knee would bow. Of those in heaven, those on earth, those under the earth. And that they, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That name is above every, every name. In heaven, in hell, or here on this earth. You ever wonder what's going on in your life? It's like, man, why are all these troubles? Why are all these trials? What's going on? Is this God testing me? Is this the devil? Or is it just me making poor choice? When I read that passage of scripture, sometimes we don't know, but all I know is that there is a name that covers every single one of those, whether it's coming from heaven or hell or from our own flesh, and it's the name of Jesus. If I know it's coming from God, then I submit myself to the lordship of Jesus. If I know it's coming from hell, then I take authority over that situation in Jesus' name. If I know it's coming from my flesh, then I put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for my flesh. 
Either way, Jesus is the answer in our lives. I remember I had a friend of mine, Terry, who was a graduate also, and he used to drive a truck, a truck like a refrigeration truck. And uh, Terry was always getting an accident. He's one of those guys that it doesn't matter what, he, what you do, what you give him. I mean, I, I made a bunch of like nine or 10 holes, dirt holes at my, in my property. I've got like six acres. And uh, we got a motorbike and Terry got on the bike. He goes, I want to jump those. I want to jump those because he saw me jumping them. So what does he do? He jumps them and he goes right into the mesquite trees. And then I got in trouble from his wife because I put the, the hills out there. Anyways, Terry, he's always getting in trouble. So Terry winds up Going home, he used to do a refrigeration truck. In the middle of the night, he's driving, and he falls asleep. He falls asleep, and all he remembers, he goes, when he wakes up, he's in the middle of the, of the, of the grass area, and he literally just flies over the bridge. It was like 2 or 3 in the morning, some back road in the farm road. And he goes, when I woke up, he goes, all I saw was that. He goes, and all I could think of was I just said, Jesus! Boom, everything crashed. All he knew is that when he woke up, he was outside of that truck, there on the side of a ditch, not one bone was broken, nothing happened to him, he's still alive today. Now, I would not recommend that you go try that, okay? So I'm just saying that we have power in the name of Jesus. So this morning, what I wanted to do is just simply, I had a, 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 a pastor who was very dear to me when I first began to walk with Jesus, Pastor Freeborn, he was a major theologian, just a godly man. And uh, he would always tell me, he goes, Marcus, every now and then, I need you to do this in your life. As you reflect, it gives you a sense of gratitude when you do this. And he would use acrostics. And so he would take a name and then he would just put different things that it meant to me during that season of my life. So that's what I'm going to do this morning. I'm going to look at the name of Jesus and use use it as an acrostic. And I'm going to let you dive into my world where I'm at right now personally in my walk with Jesus and kind of give you uh, the idea of who Jesus is to me in this season of my life. Is that okay? One, J. J to me is just. And not, not only is he just and true and honest and all those things, but just for me is just in time. He's always just in time. He's just in time every single time. Sometimes we question his timing, but right now I am just learning to trust him regardless of how long it's taking to fix that admin building. How long it's taking to free my daughter after 16 years. How long does it take to, there's so many things that are going on that sometimes you just get tired, but you have to learn how to rest. Lord, I have to trust you. You're just in time. He always does things at the right time. Some of you might be facing death pretty soon, or you're wondering about death. And uh, uh, there's a story about Corey Tim Boone, who happened to go over to, when she was a little girl, happened to go over to her neighbor's house and in the neighbor's house, she finds the neighbor dead in, 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 their, in their home. And dad was there with him. But immediately, she realized that one day, that's going to happen to her parents. That one day, they were no longer going to be there. And so she was a little bit terrified. And dad comes up to her, and he comforts her with these words. It's in his book. And he said, uh, Corey, he goes, when you and I go to Amsterdam, when do I give you your ticket? And she says, well, right just before we get on the train, she replied. Exactly, her father said. He goes, and our wise father in heaven knows when you're going to need things too. Don't run out ahead of him, Corey. When the time comes that some of us will have to die, you will look into your heart and find the strength you need just in time. I love that. And I love that about God, how he always shows up just in time. If it's not happened yet, I no longer fret. I just got to rest. God, you're bigger than I am. If I'm delaying things, help me understand what that is. But I just trust your timing. E is enough. He is enough for me. (laughs) Acts the fourth chapter, the 12th verse, it says that there's no salvation in anyone else and no, under no other name given among men by which we must be saved. My greatest struggle, and it's been like that for a long time, is that I feel like I'm not enough. Like I always feel like I need to do more, I need to read more, I need to go to more, do this, you know, just a performance different type, type of a thing. That's how I get my approval, that's how I get my validation. And so, so I, he's showing me that, no, I am your enough. I am enough. I'm always talking about it. And I was reminded of Philip, uh, um, one of the disciples. In John's gospel, Philip comes up to Jesus and he goes, hey, Jesus, show us the Father. Maybe that'll be, that'll be enough for us. 
In other words, Philip was like, I need, I need a revelation of who your dad is, who you're connected with. Maybe that's what I need, and then I'll be ready. And Jesus goes up to him, he goes, don't you know me, Philip? He goes, even after I've been among you such a long time, anyone who's seen me has seen the Father. In other words, Jesus said, he goes, listen, see, Philip thought he needed something else. He thought he needed something more, maybe another miracle, maybe another sign. But Jesus said, hey, listen, you have everything that you need, and I'm standing right here in front of you. I'm Jesus. That's all we need. I remember coming to church just a couple years ago, and I'm at that red light over there before I turn in, take a right. And I'm asking the Lord some of these very same things. Like, man, Lord, what do I need to do? And the Spirit of God spoke to me. He goes, Marcus, you don't need another conference. You don't need to read another book. You don't need to go to another seminar. He goes, everything that you need, I've already put inside of you. I've coached you. I've walked with you. I've shown you things to come. Lean into those things. I am enough. I was like, okay, Lord, I get that, and I hear you, but can you just show me that you're here? Can you just show me? Let me know somehow that you're with me, somehow that you see me, that you're with me. So I come to church. We're worshiping just like all of us are. In the middle of the worship set, right before we make the transition, this little guy walks down that hall, I mean, down this aisle right here, and he taps me on the shoulder. And I look at him, and he's a little Jewish guy with a little rabbi thing, a rabbi hat. Uh, what do you, I forgot what you call him. Yes, okay, yes. And he says, are you a pastor here? I said, yes, sir. He goes, I'm rabbi so-and-so. I said, yeah, how can I help you? One, I don't know how security let him go through, but anyways, I was like, yeah. And he goes, I'm driving by your church, and the Spirit of God told me to turn around and stop because he wanted to tell you something. I was like, really? He says, he said, he wants you to know that he sees you and he cares and that you're enough. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> I mean, this is the craziest. Some of you guys were here when y'all saw that. They were like, who is this guy? And I had to share that story in that, in that service. But he is enough for every single need. Ma'am, your husband, you might not like the way he's operating, but he is your husband. He is enough in your situation. Sir, you're looking for validation in all the wrong places. He is your validation. You are enough. You don't need anything else. You don't need to stop doing anything. You don't need to start doing anything. You need to look at yourself and through the eyes of Christ, through the eyes of redemption and say, you know what? I am enough and be okay with that. Amen. S, strength. Strength. As I age, I'm getting older. I don't know if you guys noticed that. I'm getting older. I'm feeling older too. But as I age, I realize that my, pay, my, my, my stamina and my strength has changed. I can't run as hard as I used to. I can't go as long as I used to, you know, in every aspect. So I've got to change. My inner supply, the supply of inner grace that I need to operate in this, in this gifting, you know, it's hard to do it when your body and your mind is constantly tired. So I had to make adjustments. What's the adjustment? I had to change my pace. I had to change my pace. I can't go all out. If I'm going to get something done, it might take me two or three weeks to get it done. And you know what? I'm okay with that. And he's okay with that now. Why? Because the validation doesn't come from accomplishing a project. All I need to do is just obey what he's asked me to do. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my shield. In him, my heart will trust as I am helped, right? He, my heart leaps for joy. And with a song, I give thanks to his name. You know how I know that energy is being sapped out of me? Uh, I know that I'm getting into, into uh, dark places or, or weary places when when I, know, when I don't no longer have a heart, uh, a song in my heart. When, growing up, my little grandson, I love my little grandson. He wakes up um, and he's constantly whistling or singing or one, two, three, four. He's doing, there's always something going on. He reminds me so much of me. It's exactly how it was. There's always a whistle. There's always a tune. There's always something going on. Like, what are you doing? There comes Marcus. My mom used to be that way. I used to wake up in the morning, que lindo está la mañana. She'd be singing all the time uh, among fresh tortillas and bacon. I was like, ah, oh, that's beautiful. So I was always had that. And he can become your strength. He can become your song. When I'm, my song is missing, then I know that I'm getting weaker and I need to get strong. And you know how, where I come to when I get strong? To get strong? Wednesday nights. Recharge. That's why we did recharge, guys. We did it because it's like, hey, we need a space to create where we just come in the middle of the week and just recharge, get replenished, 
get built up, get strengthened, edify one another so we can just take on the rest of the week. Amen? Amen. Strength. You, unchanging. He is unchanging. Thank God he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Unchanging love, unchanging grace, unchanging mercy, unchanging provision. He is, I often, man, I feel guilty sometimes. I often feel like a little kid inside. I often feel like there's just a happy place inside because the God that showed me his love in the very beginning, he hasn't stopped showing me that. He hadn't stopped showing me how, how amazing he is. And he hadn't stopped showing me how amazing I am. That's why I can say with all confidence, I'm his favorite Mexican pastor. <laughs> I really believe that because I, I just feel really happy inside because his, his unchanging love, his unchanging grace, his unchanging mercy. You know, a lot of times as we interact with people, if we get to know individuals, the more we know them, the more their weaknesses and their stuff is exposed. And have you ever had an individual who was supposed to be a friend all of a sudden grow distant because they recognize some of the weaknesses and habits and hiccups that you have? Not Jesus. Not Jesus. He won't do that. He knows all about your weaknesses. He knows all about your shenanigans. He knows all about those things that you do, those antics, those things that you go to. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture in Romans, the fifth uh, chapter, verses six, it says, while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows us his love for us while we were still, boom. He demonstrated his love and he died for us. Action was placed upon Jesus when he saw us that we were just lemons, that we were just sinners, that we were weak. His unchanging love. You don't have to prove yourself or prove, prove yourself to God in any manner. He's not mad at you. If anything, he wants to embrace you, help you to understand how much he cares. That's my mission as a pastor, uh, in obedience to, to coming back to again. He goes, Marcus, show them how much I love them. To become secure in the love of Jesus is where we need to be. He knows the critic inside of me. He knows that thing inside of me, that self-critic that is, that's constantly just annoying me constantly. And he's, learned, he's teaching me how to love not only him and how much he loves me, but he's teaching me how to love myself teaching me because you can't help others if you don't love yourself that's what my wife always says I'm like oh stop saying that <laughs> so learning how to love yourself and the last one is this a savior S is for savior just simply because that's my I call if you ever hear me say it, run home to mama that's my run home to mama <laughs> that God is my salvation that's my foundation I always go to this place. Why? Because I remember how dark it was. I remember that emptiness that I had. I remember the hole that was in my heart. You know, people are searching. They're looking, they're seeking. And they're never satisfied inside. There's something missing. It's like this thing. It's like, it's like you know, there's something going on. It's like turning off the switch. You ever turn off the lights and you can't find the switch? It just happened to me this morning. I'm running up against the dresser. There's an emptiness inside. Well, that's exactly how I felt in the very beginning. And then all of a sudden, Jesus comes in and invades my little space in the living room, and he becomes light to me. He becomes my salvation. And he's constantly reminding me, when all hell breaks loose and everything around me is just really tough and bad, I go to this place. And I say, man, God, if anything, if nothing goes right, all I know is that I got you and you have me. You are my salvation. As a matter of fact, John's gospel says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me won't have to walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. What do I do with all this stuff? Well, thank you for asking. Who's Jesus to you? That's how we want to land this ship this morning. Who is he to you? This week, here's what I want to encourage you to do. Do this little thing here, this acrostic on your own Come to, come to a small group that we have. I want to encourage the small groups to do this. Do an acrostic and everyone just fill that in. Who is he to you in this season of your life? And then share it with someone. 
On Wednesday nights, I'm going to ask Pastor Jeremiah to do the same thing. During the experience, the worship experience, we used to do vision boards. And we had colors and crayons and paint and all kinds of stuff. And we'd give everybody a canvas. And just in the experience, as part of our worship, we'd put Jesus or we'd put, we would draw an image, a picture of what God was revealing to us in that season of our lives. And I want to encourage you guys to do that. We're going to do that on recharge, possibly on night of worship this next time. And for sure, we want to do it and in our small groups. But can I ask you to do something? Can I ask you to go home sometime this week and just make an acrostic? And who is he in your life? Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, the one who came to deliver you, the one who came to set you free, the, to give you forgiveness, to offer you everything that he has. Because you'll find, man, a sense of gratitude will just come up big on the inside. Amen? And then next Sunday, we begin another series It's going to be Philippians. I I, I think it's called Summer of Joy. And we're going to go through the book of Philippians. Pastor Joel is going to kick it off. It's going to be an absolute joyful time. You're going to love this word. You guys get anything out of that? Man, go back to the Name Dropper series and just dive into that stuff. Dig deeper into that stuff. It'll help you, benefit you spiritually. Amen? Let's all stand. Father, you're so good to us. (laughs) And uh, I don't know how this lands in people. I know how it lands in me, Lord God. And I just pray that people can become aware of who Jesus is to them in this season of life. Some of us may have a distorted view. Some of us have allowed the enemy to come in and deceive us and to, 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 to get us off course. And I pray that all that will be restored, Father God, this week that they will look at you face to face with confidence. There's no condemnation. There's no guilt. There's no shame. Why? Because you took all that away through your son. So we just trust you. Make it real to us this week, I pray in Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed with that said, amen. Love you guys. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.